which is just funny. Who attacked with the wrong monster? Do, I, do we risk D-Draw? Fuck it, yellow. I don't give a fuck, we're low on time. If we lose, we lose, I don't care. No. That actually worked. <laughs> With the release of the new EX structure deck, Rise of Gaia, we got support so that Gaia could be an actual competent strategy. On top of that, we got a consistency skill in the form of the Dragon Knight's Path to help increase the viability of the deck. Gaia, the Magical Knight, and Curse of Dragonfire are our two starters. Despite being a level 7, Gaia, the Magical Knight, can be normal summoned without tributing as long as you control no monsters or your opponent controls a monster with at least 2300 attack. When you summon it, you can special summon a level 5 Dragon Monster from your hand or graveyard, our target being Curse of Dragonfire. Curse of Dragonfire allows you to fusion summon using monsters on the field, including itself, allowing you to fusion summon without actually needing to play polymerization. Within this strategy, we have two fusion targets, Boat which can be made using Guy the Magical Knight and Curse of Dragonfire as material, the first being an oldie, Sky Galloping Guy the Dragon Champion, which searches Spiral Spear Strike on summon. When Sky Galloping declares an attack, it's able to change the battle position of the monster to attack without targeting. Meanwhile, Spiral Spear Strike is support for Guy the Dragon Champion, a monster we don't actually play, allowing it to inflict piercing damage and then have you draw two cards and discard one if you do so. Sky Galloping Gaia's name happens to become Guy the Dragon Champion on the field, so it does gain the benefits from this effect. It's a nice supplemental monster to fuse into in certain situations, but the real reason we play the deck is for the next card, the new fusion monster Guy the Magical Knight of Dragons. This is our main boss monster, with the ability to quick effect pop during the main phase as long as it's able to successfully reduce its attack by 2600. If it destroys a monster by battle, it gains 2600 attack. These two effects synergize, allowing you to apply pressure on your opponent with a strong beater alongside quick effect disruption when your opponent tries to do anything. As with Sky Galloping, Guy the Magical Knight of Dragons counts as a Guy the Dragon Champion on the field, so it does gain the benefits of Spiral Spear Strike. So the strategy essentially lives and dies by having both Guy the Magical Knight and Curse of Dragon fire in hand turn one. However, the new skill circumvents this, making it more consistent. The Dragon Knight's Path allows you to return one card from your hand to the deck to play the new field spell, Galloping Gaia, onto the field straight from your deck. Galloping Gaia lets you reveal a Gaia the Fierce Knight monster to add a level 5 Dragon monster from your deck to your hand, or reveal a level 5 Dragon monster to add a Gaia the Fierce Knight monster from your deck to your hand. So essentially, if you have either Gaia the Magical Knight or Curse of Dragonfire in hand turn one, one, you have combo. The field spell also has another effect in that if you control a Gaia the Dragon Champion during the battle phase, your opponent cannot activate any effects during that battle phase, like absolutely no effects. This turns off any set spells and traps they might have, any monster effects on the field, any floating effects, and any hand traps they might have completely. And remember, both of our fusions count as Gaia the Dragon Champion on the field. This effect and the ease in which we are able to activate it and set up full combo is what makes the strategy so potent, allowing it to force your opponent to activate all their effects in the main phase lest they get OTK'd in the battle phase with no chance to respond. Not the destiny draw nerf we wanted, but at least a nice middle finger to all the kite roids in battle and boxer veils in the meta. The field spell, if uninterrupted, can allow us to consistently garner resources for a follow-up each turn as long as we have something in hand to reveal. Uninterrupted being the keyword, with cards like Mystical Space Typhoon and Cosmic Cyclone being able to unironically negate the search if timed properly, the strategy can suffer immensely once you lose your field spell, halting your ability to grab your combo pieces. We mitigate this by playing two copies of the field spell so that we can still have a chance if the first copy is removed. Keep in mind, though, if the first copy of the field spell was played from the skill, the second copy will have to be hard drawn as the skill itself can only be used once per duel. Another new card we play is Soldier Gaia the Fierce Knight, which can allow you to tribute your Gaia fusion monster as a quick effect to summon itself, and then on summon, change an attack position monster to defense position. While a bit of a strange effect, it could be helpful in making use of a Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons, whose attack was reduced to zero and can no longer do anything, or to dodge disruption while having a body on board. Being able to use this effect during your opponent's battle phase allows you to interrupt your opponent's OTK, or to go for the finishing blow during your own battle phase by tributing your Gaia Fusion Monster. However, keep in mind that if you tributed your only Gaia Fusion Monster to summon Soldier Gaia, you will no longer have the protection of the field spell during the battle phase, so your opponent will be able to 
activate any hand traps or effects on the field that were previously turned off. Soldier itself can also tribute during the main phase to add a Gaia the Magical Knight from the deck to the hand, giving you another pathway to combo after your initial fusion runs out of steam. A nice one of and easy to search with the field spell as long as we have a level 5 dragon in hand to reveal. Gaia the Fierce Knight Origin can be special summoned by discarding a level 5 or higher monster. It can be counted as one tribute for a warrior monster. Its main benefit is its graveyard effect, allowing you to return any monster to attack back to its original attack during either player's battle phase. If your guy, the Magical Knight of Dragons, used its pop effect and reduced its attack to zero, you could return its attack back to 2600 and proceed to attack into your opponent. If you're feeling like you need to set up a pop but can't afford to have a zero attack monster with no follow-up, you can special summon Origin with its effect by discarding Curse of Dragonfire and then normal summon Gaia the Magical Knight by tributing that Origin to make your standard combo. And if your opponent happens to control a 2300 or higher attack monster at that point, you could just normal summon that Magical Knight without tributing and then proceed to resummon that Curse of Dragonfire to use both the Curse of Dragonfire as well as the Origin to fusion summon into one of your fusion monsters while maintaining another 2300 attack beater for more OTK potential. Guide of Fierce Knight Origin is another nice one of we could search off the field spell by revealing a level 5 dragon in hand and it's also a nice card to be able to search at times when we need to go for an OTK alongside our fusion. Finally, we play Dark Flare Dragon, which you can summon by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard, which your turn 1 combo just happens to set up, with Magical Knight being a light and Curse of Dragonfire being a dark. We play this as it can be searched with the field spell by revealing any of our Gaia monsters since it is a level 5 dragon monster. Having an extra body on board alongside our fusions adds to the deck's OTK potential, allowing you to be able to add one extra attack needed that might be crucial for the early OTK. Now sometimes you do have to be careful in using the banish effect because if you banish your only curse of dragonfire from the graveyard that makes your subsequent follow-ups much more difficult if you aren't able to close out that duel that same turn. However, if you happen to have soldier Gaia the fierce knight in the graveyard, it does also count as a dark attribute monster so you could just banish that instead of curse of dragonfire. The rest of the deck is text. As the main combo is consistent and doesn't require many cards, the deck has plenty of room for tech cards which adds to its power level. Treacherous Trap Hole goes burr. Meanwhile, Mystical Space Typhoon helps you play through back row. Finally, Book of Moon and Forbidden Chalice are used both to interrupt your opponent as well as to help reset your Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons attack when used on itself. If you're a reasonable human and don't actually spend money to have Book of Moon, then you could just play three copies of Forbidden Chalice and then leave the rest of the tech slots for either a copy of Dragon's Mirror, Refusion, or Necrofusion. Finally, the rest of the extra deck is just a rank 5 and rank 7 choice, but honestly, the chances of ever going into them and being able to win a duel because of them are slim because the deck doesn't specialize in making them, so you end up using way too many resources going into that. On top of this, using the skill restricts you from summoning non-Gaia related monsters until the end of your next turn, so if there was even a situation where you might be able to benefit from this, chances are you just can't go into those plays, but we played them just because we have the room to. You could just play three copies of the Sky Galloping instead of one of these, but so far I haven't ever needed to summon three of those in a duel. And that's the deck. Overall, I think it's very powerful, and while it does have its weaknesses, it is very consistent and very strong. Other techs you could play are Gateway to Chaos, which is a field spell that helps add to the consistency of you being able to have your turn one play. By playing Gateway to Chaos, you're able to search a guy of the Magical Knight and then activate skill so that you could then search your Curse of Dragonfire, being another copy of either of your combo pieces. And that's the deck. A very strong deck. I think it's very powerful, but also definitely has its weaknesses, especially when it goes second uh, and you have to play through a lot of back row. Some might opt for playing more back row removal to help circumvent that. However, in certain situations, even through a lot of back row hate, the deck can still function well. TBH, most of the replays you're about to see are me going first, and I, as much as I wanted to get a lot of replays going second, it's really hard to get any better relevant duels uh, in COG when everybody's just moving in, in COG right now, so whatever, don't judge. We are going first in a Yami Yugi versus Yami Yugi, and they got themselves third card decks. So we're going to assume either Fire Kings or Thunder Dragons. We activate the Dragon's Knight path immediately, returning the Curse of Dragonfire to the deck to play the Galloping Gaia, setting a back row, and then we reveal that Curse of Dragonfire we still have in our hand to add the Gaia the Magical Knight from the deck to the hand, normal summoning that Gaia the Magical Knight to special summon the Curse of Dragonfire, and then activating the Curse of Dragonfire's effect to fusion into the Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons, counting as a Gaia the Dragon Champion. Ending our turn, they go ahead, activate Fire King Island. We wait until they activate its effect so we could respond with our Gaia the Magical Knight's effect to pop the Fire King Island. That way, if they have another copy, 
they won't be able to activate its search effect. They do normal summon in Arvada, and then they end their turn. We're gonna go ahead and use Book of Moon. We could Book of Moon ourselves, but we don't need to reset our attack because we have a different play line. Flipping down to Arvada so can't negate our effects. We're then going to activate Field Spell, revealing the Soldier so we could add the Dark Fairy Dragon from the deck to the hand. Soldier gonna tribute the Gaia Fusion so we can special summon it, chaining ourselves to defense position for Deflex, and then tributing ourselves to add Guy the Magical Knight from the deck to the hand. Then we're going to normal summon that Guy the Magical Knight so we can special summon back that Curse of Dragon Fire from the graveyard. And then we're going to banish the Soldier as well as the Guy the Magical Knight that was already in the graveyard to special summon Dark Flare Dragon. Fusion summoning with the Curse of Dragon Fire to make Sky Galloping the Dragon Champion. Searching the Spiral Spear Strike from the deck to the hand, we're activating that Spiral Spear Strike. We have Piercing Damage and that's going to allow us to deal 2400 to that Arvada's small 200 defense and they cannot activate any hand traps. We draw two, discarding the origin. In another context, if this duel is still going on, that would be super useful. But because all of their effects are turned off thanks to our field spell, we have lethal. And that is game. Something, something, GG easy. Now we are going first against Yami Yugi. It looks like it is a 20 card deck versus a 20 card deck. So I would think this might be mirror match. So we're just going to pray. As we activate our skill, returning the Dark Flare Dragon to the deck, we're going to play the Galloping Gaia, revealing the Curse of Dragonfire to add the Gaia, the Magical Knight, from the deck to the hand, setting our MST and our Forbidden Chalice. So we're going to normal summon that Gaia, the Magical Knight, special summon the Curse of Dragonfire to activate its effect, to fusion summon the Gaia, the Magical Knight of Dragons in defense mode. Always summon the Defense mode just because if we have to use our effect, we don't want to have an attack position zero attack monster if we can help it. They activate Tenki and we respond with MST negate so they do not get to search off the Tenki. Then they activate the Lunalight Fusion because of course they have it. Sending the Crimson Fox from their deck as well as the White Rabbit from their hand to the graveyard to make the Cat Dancer. If we had the Soldier Gaia, we would have attributed in response to the Lunalight Fusion to prevent them from using the deck, but we didn't have that luxury. So we're just going to play as best as we can. As they activate Crimson Fox, effect to reduce our attack to zero before they could do so we are going to activate our effect to try to pop the cat dancer we know that it will be negated with the crimson fox effect but at least now we got that out of the way forcing them to banish and we gained a thousand light points in doing so they destroy us and end their turn we rip into curse of dragon fire which isn't a bad top deck we activate the galloping guy to search the guide the magical knight but knowing we don't really have otk potential this turn we decide to chill just so we we, we don't risk getting hit by a follow up loon life that ends up cucking us. So they activate the Tenki, adding an Emerald Bird from the deck to the hand, normal summoning that Emerald Bird. We respond with the Forbidden Chalice, so though they do not get the draw and discard effect. That leads them to go straight into the battle phase. If it wasn't for their own Crimson Fox's effect, we would have been we would have been done zoned. But for some reason, they don't understand that we've already activated our skill and they decided to play around the draw, attacking only with one monster. And we, on our turn, rip into the origin. We activate Galpin Guy's effect to search the Dark Flare Dragon. Activating Origin's effect to discard the Curse of Dragonfire to special summon the Origin onto the field. We normal summon the guy, the Magical Knight, without tributing because they have a 2300 or higher attack monster on the field already. Special summoning the Curse of Dragonfire, we're going to use its effect to fusion summon with the Origin to make Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons. Then we're going to banish one of our Curse of Dragonfires as well as Gaia the, the Magical Knight so we can special summon the Dark Flare Dragon from the hand. Activate the guy, the Magical Knight. Knight of Dragons effect to pop the Cat Dancer. In the battle phase, we're going to banish the Origin to return our Fusion Monster's attack to 2600, destroying their Emerald Bird, and we attack for game. No hand traps can be activated, so that is GG easy. Now we have the one game when I'm actually showing you myself going second. <laughs> and it is a mirror match, which is a very weird mirror match, but I think in a lot of situations it's favored towards going second, as long as you have the right card. So the opponent is going to activate the Gateway to Chaos to search Soldier Gaia, the Fierce Knight from the deck to the hand, and then activate their skill to play the Field Spell, Galloping Gaia, revealing the Magical Knight to add Curse of Dragonfire from the deck to the hand. Normal summoning Gaia, the Magical Knight, to special summon the Curse of Dragonfire to then make their fusion monster set a back row and end their turn we have basically all the techs we need mst to pop their forbidden chalice then we activate the galloping gaia we don't even have to use skill to do so revealing the gaia the magical knife or rather the curse of dragon fire to add the 
at the um, origin. Then we discard the Curse of Dragonfire to special summon the origin, then normal summon guide the Magical Knight, and then uh, special summon the Curse of Dragonfire from the Graveyard to activate its uh, first effect, which we rarely activate, which is to pop a field spell on the field. Their fusion monster responds by trying to pop our money card to Curse of Dragonfire, but we activate Forbidden Chalice to negate, successfully popping their follow-up, then using the Curse of Dragonfire as well as the guy origin to fusion summon into the our own magical knight of champions or dragons whatever it's called destroying their fusion monster gaining 2600 attack attacking for 2300 and ending our turn and since we destroyed their field spell they have no follow-up and so that is a scoop we are going second versus reginald shark castle we got ourselves the no tech hand as we only have combo we're gonna try to see what we can do with that as they normal summon the infantry into the deep sea diver they have their combo going special summoning from the deck the marksman activating skill to make all their monsters level four into the dweller using the diva and infantry as material and setting a card they're gaming as we go ahead we rip into a soldier guy so still no text but we're gonna try to make the best we can with the situation normal summoning the guy the magical knight to special summon the curse of dragon fire we decide not to use skill since we have combo already and we figure we just wait off and see what we can what, what the opponent does first before doing anything we do successfully make our fusion and so then we proceed to activate skill returning dark flare dragon to the deck to play galloping guy to which they respond with a cosmic cyclone banishing the galloping guy now that we know what that hidden back row was we go ahead and respond with our fusions effect to reduce our attack by 2600 to pop the dweller to which the dweller responds with detaching the infantry now in that chain link we were able to successfully pop the dweller in the next chain link as the infantry attempts to pop our fusion we respond with soldier guy the fierce knight tributing our fusion to special summon the soldier guy the fierce knight and go ahead and clear their board destroying their marksman ending their turn now that was a very beneficial situation for us because typically if you try to activate guy the magical knight of dragons effect the same chain that you tributed for soldier guy the fierce knight it's the fact that the guy the Magical Knight of Dragons effect is not going to be able to resolve because it's going to be tributed before its attack can reduce successfully by 2600. So the fact that Infantry Pop was in a different chain link from Abyss Dweller's destruction was a benefit to us. So now we're playing the Avoiding TTH game. As we now feel their delays, we know that when we destroy one of their monsters, there's no delay, and then when they set a monster, there is. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to hold off on activating Soldier Guy's effect to um, add a guy the Magical Knight from deck to the hand so we could combo into another fusion because we know we're just going to get hit by a TTH. Instead, we're just going to put the pressure on them, force them to activate the TTH whenever they feel like it. They keep sending. We keep attacking them with Soldier Gaia, and we just keep playing the dance until they finally get fed up with it, activating the TTH, popping both their monster as well as their Soldier Gaia. But we have our own TTH set, so we're chilling. As they top deck into a monster that they set, we rip it to the Book of Moon, we set it, and now we have combo yet again. Normal summoning the Gaia, the Magical Knight, into the Curse of Dragonfire, discarding the Curse of Dragonfire in the hand, so we can special summon the origin which can then be used alongside the curse of dragon fire to fuse into another guy fusion and before any of that resolves they scoop it up and that is a gg easy as per usual we are going first and honestly i was trying really hard to find replays going second against some of these decks but man nobody is out here playing meta decks and cog this this week so whatever here's me going first against resonators if you're going second just mst or hope they don't set solemn i don't know don't at me as we activate a skill to return a card from our hand to the deck we then set our book of moon as well as our treach so that we could then activate the field spell so we could reveal and add the missing combo piece we have gaia the magical knight to uh, then special summon the curse of dragonfire so that we could fusion summon into the guy the magical knight of dragons and end our turn they're gonna go ahead activate book of moon so that they don't have to worry about our quick effect pop then activate demon's resonance revealing crimson resonator to add wandering king wildwind from the deck to the hand special summon the crimson resonator then they're going to special summon the wandering king going into the red rising dragon which is going to resummon the crimson resonator and before they activate the crimson resonator's effect we're just going to tth go burr but they have resonator call so that they could add a red resonator from the deck to the hand and end their turn we're gonna flip up our fusion monster set our book of moon attack for 2600 and end their our turn they're gonna go ahead banish wandering king to add a, a red resonator from the deck to the hand then activate skill yet again to reveal red resonator return a card so they could add another wandering king wild wind 
Crimson Resonator on the field. Going to special summon. Going to special summon the Wandering. Going to summon the um, Red Resonator. And since they already normal summoned, we didn't have to worry about Obelisk there. So we just let them do their plays uh, without popping. Then they make the Red Rising Dragon, resummoning the Red Resonator, which is going to gain them a lot of life points uh, by targeting uh, their their monster. Uh, we're going to respond by popping their monster so they don't actually get to gain those life points. And as they attempt to attack Terra Zero, attack, attack position monster with the Crimson Resonator, we activate Book of Moon on ourselves, forcing them to take 1300 damage, meanwhile resetting our uh, attack. Nani? Yo, 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 we got people in here. Oh my god. <laughs> What's up?